Today I'm gonna tell you a bit about the first pet I ever had on my own, whose name is Clive. Clive's full name is Clive's Snails Lewis, um, which is of course a play on C.S. Lewis, <laughs> because <laughs> I polled some people on what I should name name my pet, and uh, that was one of the responses. The the story of Clive Snails Lewis, who is who is in fact a garden snail, um, is a bit long and is pretty communal, um, and. I don't really know how best to start it, because it actually begins a couple months before Clive. Um, it begins in fall of 2019, when I was a graduate student at the University of Michigan. And I received an email from the listserv, which is basically just if you want to get in touch with every student who goes to school with information, you email the listserv and tell them about your event or whatever. And there was an email that came through, which had the subject line, free to a good home, snail, and terrarium. And I read the email, and I thought to myself, it is bonkers to want to get a stranger's free extra snail. And then I thought about it for 15 more minutes, and then I emailed them, and I asked if I could have their snail. And they said no, because five other people had already emailed them asking for that same snail. Uh, but they did say to me, I can send you the website where I bought the snail if you're interested in buying your own. And so I, I bought a snail from this website. I just found one that I thought was, was pretty, and um, I ordered a $10 mail order snail off the internet. And I didn't think that much more about it until I got the confirmation email of the shipping, which let me know that my snail had arrived at its shipping center uh, in Kiev, in the Ukraine. So, um, at that point, I realized that I was purchasing an international mail order snail, but I was, I was still down for it. Uh, if you're, if you're curious, by the way, the way that you ship a snail is you induce hibernation because snails hibernate and then you put them in a box and you send them 5,000 miles from Ukraine to Ann Arbor. I was staying at my grandparents' cabin since they're from up north. They've got a cabin basically in the middle of the woods in this tiny town that no one has ever heard of where I was going to stay for the week that I was doing my research project. And I brought my snail with me. And so I got there and I got there late because I left after class. It was maybe, I don't know, 8 p.m. or something. And so I was making some dinner and also looking at this box of snails, which had a bunch of Russian written on over it. And um, I... I had read on the website that what you're supposed to do when you open them is you're supposed to put the, the snail in a dish of warm water because that will wake it up from hibernating. So I decided I was going to do that. I opened up my box of my snail and I saw my snail sitting in the box. And I also realized that my box was very large for this one snail and there was a lot of packing material in it. And I began to unpack the packing material, and what I discovered is that I had not been sent one snail. I had been sent 16 garden snails from Ukraine. Uh, which, again, I would have known if I had read the packing information, because I only bought one snail. I only, I only paid for one snail. But on the packing label, it does say that I was purchasing 10 pieces of, of souvenirs, is what they called them, on the international transit slip. Um, so I now had 16 Ukrainian snails on the counter of my grandparents' cabin in the middle of the woods, um, and I didn't quite know what to do about that. The problem with having 16 snails isn't that I have 16 snails. I mean, they're, the ones I got were only about the size of a nickel, so they would all fit in my terrarium just fine. The problem is that, uh, if you're a gardener, you know that snails are what's called simultaneous hermaphrodites. That means that they have both male and female sex organs. So every snail can mate with every other snail, and then every snail can have a clutch of eggs. And these clutches are like 16 to 30, maybe 60, I don't remember exactly, but it's a lot of snails. And I wasn't ready to have 400 snails by the end of the month because I could barely handle 16 snails now. And I was trying to figure out what I was supposed to do with all these snails, but my immediate response is like, I'm just gonna try and wake one up because I don't know what else to do. So I got a dish of water and I put the prettiest snail in the water and I waited and it never woke up. And I put every single snail 
in that dish of water, and none of them ever woke up. Which, on the one hand, was very uh, much a cause of relief, because I no longer had 15 extra snails. Um, on the other hand, I did not have a single snail, which is what I was interested in having. One of, one of them did actually wake up uh, very briefly the day after when I was heading out to Traverse City. I saw it and it crawled around a little bit, but then it went back in its shell and never came out again. So I'm not sure if it was some sort of uh, response to being mailed to a different climate um, in a cardboard box, but I pretty much, I confirmed that they were all dead. Uh, if you want to know that a snail is dead, by the way, you just smell it and if it smells like fish, it's dead. And then I packed up my box of dead snails and I went back home to Ann Arbor and wrote my research paper. Clive was a direct result of the COVID pandemic, actually. That all happened with the snails and the Ukraine. That happened in September of 2019, I think. And by March of 2020, we were all stuck in our houses. I was still working on my graduate program. It was my last semester. Um, one of my housemates left. She went back to her home in Grand Rapids to weather out the pandemic with her family. I had the other one with me. I didn't know her very well. And I was really lonely. And I know a lot of people got pets as a result of the pandemic, but I was in a no pets lease. And I didn't feel like I could break that, especially since I was at the very end of it. And I just, I knew that I needed something to care for. I needed something there with me, even if it was something that was generally considered a pest, something that was ugly, and something that wouldn't even know that I existed. So instead of going to the shelter and getting a dog, I went to eBay. And at this point, I had learned that it is very difficult to buy a single snail. Um, even on eBay, they're usually sold in breeding pairs, actually for people who want to breed snails for some reason. I, I don't know. I never got that far into the subculture. But I did find one eventually. Um, it was a garden snail from California, and I paid way too much for it, because if you are paying anything for a garden snail, you are paying way too much for it. And I ordered it, and they sent it to me again in the mail. And this time, though, it came, instead of in a cardboard box, it was in two tofu containers that had been taped together, and then the shipping label had been stuffed on them. And I opened it up, and that was Clive. So Clive uh, existed with me in my apartment in Ann Arbor, uh, in his terrarium. And it is a really absurd thing, I think, to say that you love an animal. I think it's less absurd to love a cat or a dog or maybe one of the more charismatic animals that can respond to you and that can love you back. To love a mollusk is bizarre um, and very unexpected. Even when I was embarking on this journey, I was doing it mostly because I thought it would be funny and kind of interesting to have a snail. What I discovered is that even though Clive didn't really have a personality, even though he didn't have any conception of me as a thing apart from a threat. It was a comfort to be near him. I don't think a lot of people know that you can hear snails chew. Um, they're very, very loud, especially when they are eating eggshells, which you put in their terrarium so that they can make their shells strong with the calcium. And they're also nocturnal. So when I was alone in my apartment, you know, it's week four of the pandemic when everyone was so scared and no one left their homes for anything, I would lie awake and I would listen to the sound of my snail chewing. And that was a sound that made me feel less alone. I think this story makes a bit more sense if you know that my family were not pet owning people. Um, I had a guinea pig in fourth grade, and we had some hermit crabs and some fish that we won from carnivals and that sort of thing. I have never had a relationship with an animal beyond that, and not in my adult life. So it is not a thing that I had experienced to feel that sort of care for a non-human thing. Um, I enjoy animals. I love my friends, dogs, and cats. I love to pet them and snuggle with them, but it, it has never been a part of my life before. And... 
Clive was a creature that you cannot really snuggle with and is difficult to pet. Um, but I still felt that sense of affection, not because he did anything for me, consciously or unconsciously, but because he was my responsibility. And even in a small way, he helped me, even though there was no way he could have known he was doing that. I don't even know if snails have brains. I don't think they do. <laughs> I don't have brain stems. Clive started hibernating, um, maybe in April of 2020, a little bit after I had gotten him. I don't know if it's some sort of Michigan thing. He came to Michigan and freaked out about it and then started hibernating. He didn't wake up for a long time. And I was a little bit worried about that because I had, you know, previously kind of killed 16 snails. Um, and then I moved back to Holland. I finished my graduate degree. I didn't walk because of COVID. Um, I moved back here and I started a job at Herrick as a librarian. And Clive came with me. He moved into my new apartment. He did wake up. Um, he scooted around and ate carrots and eggshells and that sort of thing. And a couple months after that, he started hibernating again and he never came back out of it. I don't know how old he was when I got him, so I'm going to go ahead and say that he died of old age because I can't put another snail on my conscience like that. But, and I think, I think because he was what he was, a mollusk, and I am who I am, which is not a pets person and not overly sentimental anyways, I was not uh, unduly sad when Clive died, as maybe callous as that sounds, but I do miss him sometimes. I miss the sounds that he makes, and... I miss knowing that for a while he and I were kind of the only parts of each other's lives because we had no choice in the matter, either of us. Um, I have a shell yet. I still have that, but I have not gotten another snail. Maybe I will someday, but my stats aren't great. So maybe, maybe it's time to move up to something more self-sufficient, like a cat or a lizard. <laughs>